I don't think so. Oh no, I look like a weird floating head. Yay, I'm not a floating blob anymore. Do you understand your clothes? No, like actually understand your clothes and what they are saying to the world. You don't have to go to therapy with your favorite dress. So how are we feeling today? But what you do need to do is start understanding the relationship that the clothes you pick, everything from the texture, the silhouette, the balance of your outfit, and what it communicates to the world. The fundamentals of your fashion have a profound effect on this communication style. So this is fashion 101, and I don't know why so many people skip this. We can give you all the tips and tricks in the book, but if you don't understand this basic concept, your style is forever going to suffer. I know, I'm a little dramatic, but, but. Very important. So figuring out your body type, whether you use the Kibbe system, McJimsey, Essences, the fruit system, whatever option you choose, or if you choose not to use a body system at all, that is really only half the puzzle. The other half is almost like a recipe. You have your raw ingredients, you understand your body. Now, what are you putting into the mixing bowl? How does everything work together? Is there harmony? Is there disjunction? What are you trying to communicate to the world? I believe in fighting strength through style. That's what I'm all about. And this is how you're going to do it. <laughs> Kidding, kind of joking, but not really. So, classes in session. Oh my gosh, these are so dirty. I can't wear them for the whole scene. But you get the you get the impression. People, people, I know watching the runway shows or binging your favorite influencers thrift stalls is so entertaining. But that isn't your style. It can be. But the thing you have to understand about your style is the basics. So clothes have the following characteristics. They have line, they have shape and form, they have texture, they have contrast, they have color, and then we're also gonna talk about the theme. No more ugly outfits, no more closet overwhelm. We are taking back the power. We are taking control of our wardrobes. Let's get going. Okay, so first we're going to talk about line. And generally we could talk about this as silhouette. So we can look at the outline of the clothing in something like this, and we can see different lines and what it's communicating. But we also wanna look at what the garment says. And this can be done by kind of looking at the pattern pieces, but if you're not a fashion designer, that's okay. We have straight lines, we have curved lines, we kind of have tubular lines or voluminous lines, and we have diagonal lines. And when you combine these in different ways, you get very different aesthetics. So here's a great example of straight lines within a garment. You can see that the neckline and the overall shape of the dress is all straight. The slit is straight, the back seams are straight. It is floor to ceiling straight, which creates a very severe silhouette. Now this dress is also straight, because, but because of the playful trim that mimics curves, it has a much more playful energy. Now this dress has curved lines. You can see the cowl neckline and the, the way it hugs my body and then flares out. All of those lines are curved. This one also has curved, a curved silhouette, even though it has some straight and diagonal straps to it. You can see that it hugs the body and flares out and there's movement to it. Here's an example of tubular or voluminous lines. You can see that as I move, the shape changes. These silhouettes are most often draped. Here you can see three examples. Straight lines with strong shoulders, curved but with more structure, also curved but in a softer fabric. And you can see that this is really more of a spectrum than a one size fits all. Okay, so what happens when we combine the two? Well, it kind of depends how much juxtaposition is in the silhouette. With this dress, you can see that it's overall a straight silhouette, but we have this huge curved ruffle right around the bust, which creates a very eccentric, trendier look than let's say this look. This look has a more blended look. You can see that the line goes straight, gently swings out. So you can see that the, the more blended or harmonized your line is within the garment, the more classic the silhouette is and the more juxtaposition or disharmony within a dress like this one, you can see that that gives a trendier approach. And this is important because if you figured out what kind of style direction you want to go into, then you should know which one you should be targeting. And if you look at your closet and you start to see like, oh my goodness, I have all these disjointed trendy lines, but I want a classic silhouette, then you need to do some auditing. So it's not just the outline of the piece that we also have to pay attention to. We also have to pay attention to the shapes and the forms within the garment. What are the pockets like? What are the, what's the seaming like? What's the trim like? So we can see here with these two pocket examples, we have these square, heavy cargo style pockets that are on the chest. And we have this slightly delicate curved pocket in a softer fabric. These two things communicate different essences. What you're also going to want to pay attention to is how much background is created by these elements. So if you have a lot of trim, 
or a lot of detailing or a focal point on your outfit, then you're gonna wanna look at the space around it. You can see here that there's two very different styles here because of how much empty background space is created within the shapes of the garment. We've looked at line, we looked at shape, and we kind of start, are starting to understand how they're working together to form a trendier silhouette, a classic silhouette. Next, we're gonna move on to texture, which is where it gets really interesting. Because texture is so overlooked. Now, texture has such an impact on how we perceive garments. Now, that's why we think of velvet at the holidays or Chanel with tweed. These things become iconic representations of ourselves. So here's where the Kibbe system or the Kitchener Essence system can really help you come into play. And I will link some resources below. And also you can check out this video if you're curious about the Kibbe system. But again, we're gonna talk about the yin and yang. So yang is angular, yin is soft and rounded. And when it comes to texture, what we wanna do is we wanna harmonize our body and the essence we give off. So my essence is more dramatic romantic. And what that says to me is that heavier weight fabrics look best on me. Really soft fabrics tend to make me look like I'm a T-Rex and like a tutu. It's just, it's not cute. <laughs> but because I have this information, I know how to play with different textures. So you can see in this look, I have some velvet and lace, but it's in a darker hue and we'll get to color later. But you can see that these textures work for my body. Whereas something like this, it's not my best. Now, if you want to skip over this whole education on kibbe and essences, that's totally fine. And what you can do is you can just start trying on textures. Go to your favorite store, grab every texture you can find, go in the fitting room, try them on, and snap some pictures. Different fabrics mean different things. And just because two items are fuzzy doesn't mean they have the same style essence. So pay attention to all the details. You're going to want to look at how the, the fabric hangs on your body. So if you're really curvy, you may do better with lighter weight trousers or if you're really broad shouldered you may do better with soft texture knits over a fuzzy mohair these are things you have to figure out for yourself but understanding and just critically looking at the textures of your garments will help you start to understand that and it can also help you dress more seasonally appropriate or lifestyle appropriate for instance we wear velvet around the holidays or we wear suede for fall and if this is at all confusing just start to look at the texture and add an adjective to it so Add linen, natural. Mohair, soft, luxurious, feminine. Look at the adjectives associated with each texture and see if they fit into what you want to communicate to the world. If you need to be professional in a business world, maybe it would help to have cleaner textures like wools and cottons that have a staccato edge to them. Okay, so let's talk briefly about contrast. So understanding how much contrast your outfit can impact the feel of the outfit. So if we have a tonal outfit, it feels very fluid. It feels all harmonious. Whereas we have a monochrome outfit and that feels just a little bit more serious than the tonal. And then we have a stark black and white outfit versus a color blocked outfit. They have two different feelings to it. One has a more serious professional feel and the other has a more other has a more playful feel. So understand not just your coloring, but how much juxtaposition there is in your entire outfit's contrast. What are the percentages that work for you? My biggest tip for this is to start photographing your favorite outfits. Every day, snap a quick selfie, and over a period of about 30 days, you should start to see whether you like high contrast outfits or low contrast outfits. Here you can see that contrast can manifest in many different ways, many different prints, and many different styles. You can see it with two separate pieces, and don't forget that texture can play an important part too. Pause. Am I making sense? Because sometimes I feel like I am talking into the ether. Please let me know in the comments any of the questions you have or anything you need me to clarify. I'm happy to answer them. So we started to see how contrast can affect the overall impression of an outfit. What can impact even more is the colors you choose. They have such a profound effect on your style. Now for this, I actually suggest finding your seasonal color analysis. And I'm gonna link an article below to help you get started and start understanding what the heck I'm talking about. Now, seasonal color analysis, I was actually misinformed about this because I thought, I don't wanna know my seasonal colors. I like to wear whatever colors I want. But seasonal color analysis is not about limiting your color palette. What it is, is it's about finding the correct shades, undertones, and hues of a color that make you look like you come alive. Are you warm toned, neutral toned, or cool toned? This can impact which colors you choose. So whether you realize it or not, color has a 
profound psychological impact on your outfit. We wear black to funerals, we wear red dresses to be sexy. The red dress effect, fascinating. I know, my note is showing. So then you might be asking, well, how does black then work for funerals, but also work for lingerie? Well, hey, A plus students. What do you want me to do? So we're gonna go back and check our notes. It has to do with line, silhouette, and texture. So a funeral outfit in black is going to have matte texture. It's going to have structure. It's going to have straight lines. It's going to be covered, and it's going to have a more severe silhouette. This makes it feel overall more dark and serious. Now with lingerie, we have curved lines, we have satin and lace textures, we have juxtaposed weights of fabric, and we have skin showing, a completely different meaning than the funeral look. And if you want a little cheat sheet on color psychology, here it is. I will also put it in the description so you can pin it to your Pinterest boards. We've covered line, shape and form, texture, contrast and color, What's next? The theme. So, I am not suggesting you dress like you are a Wes Anderson character every day. No. I mean, I love it. I love it. I wish I could be a Wes Anderson character every day of my life. But no. What I want you to do is start noticing the themes of your outfit and where you generally lean. So, for instance, if you've created a Pinterest board and you've started pinning your favorite look, start going through your closet and your Pinterest board and understanding what themes you gravitate towards. So maybe you gravitate towards classic, elegant, polished, and put together. Well, then you need to look back at all the things we've learned in this video and start applying them. If you wanna have a classic silhouette or an elegant silhouette, then you're gonna use less juxtaposed lines. So minimal color and patterns, cleaner lines and silhouettes, less shapes and forms within the garment, and more classic detailing. And you're not gonna wanna have a lot of stark contrast within the classic elegant look. Now, if you wanna be the edgier girl, you're gonna go for straight lines, you're gonna go for sharp textures, you're gonna go for harsh contrast, you're gonna try to create colors that have a lot of conflict to them, like red and black. Whereas the edgy girl can do a lot of trims like studs and grommets and all of these harder metal things. And you can add a lot more disjointed elements and trendier elements than the classic elegant theme. Your theme is kind of like your personal style. And honestly, your personal style will evolve with you as the years go on. You don't have to be a fashion designer or a professional stylist to start looking at clothes more critically. Start to examine how they impact your aesthetic. Start to examine how they fall on your body. Ultimately, this is a recipe that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. But if you start examining all the features that we talked about, it will be a lot easier. And you'll start to see common threads that pull through. Now, this is not to say that you can't change your fashion, you can't have days where you go against your general theme or personal style, that's absolutely okay. But what we wanna do is start developing a wardrobe that speaks mostly to our style goals and what we wanna to communicate to the world. If you can properly assess a piece of clothing and decide if it's what you want to communicate to the world, you will be in much better shape. Your personal style will grow and evolve and be the best version of you it possibly can be. Okay, before I call recess, should we do a video on proportions next and dressing for your proportions? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to up your style even more, this is the next video you should watch. Until next time.